this is about the rotation for square knots. Of course, if you do the surgeon's knot, the first throw will be two throws, so it only is basically the same procedure. But I will show you the rotation for the surgeon's uh, square knot. You enter from the buckle aspect first, and then slowly rotate, and you come out from the lingual aspect. Pull the string all the way to make the short end very short, 3 to 5 cm. This is very important. And then you flip your needle and grab it, and you engage from the lingual aspect, and you come out of the buccal tissue. So this is the first engagement of the flaps of the buccal and the lingual flap. Now you're ready for the square knot. At this point, you don't need the tissue plier anymore. So remove your tissue plier and your left hand on your left palm, you drop the whole silk like this. Especially the needle can go down as low as low as low like this. And your left hand slowly grips the silk. And usually the thumb and index finger holds the silk. Now you have a short end just like 3 to 5 centimeters like this. Now we are ready for the first throw. Before the throw, we have uh, three rules to follow. Rule number one, the needle holder goes above the incision line. So let's pretend that this is the incision line and the needle holder goes above the incision line. And number two, the silk rotates around the needle holder. Uh, when you rotate the silk, sometimes the textbook says it should be clockwise or it should be counterclockwise. But it's a very confusing way to explain because if you look from this direction, it can be the counterclockwise. But if you look from this direction, it can be clockwise. So this meaning of the clockwise and counterclockwise uh, wise is a very, very uh, subjective. So in order to prevent this confusion, I will say that the position of the needle holder is very important. Let me go back to the rule number one. The needle holder goes above the incision line and the silk turns around the needle holder. When you turn around the needle holder, needle holder is inside the loop. It is important. The needle holder is inside the loop. You rotate it so that the needle holder is inside the loop. If you do the opposite direction, the needle holder is outside the loop and you rotate it. If you do prefer this outside technique, you continue to uh, rotate the silk to the outside direction. But in order to prevent the confusion, I will say that you always put your needle holder inside the loop, rotate once for square knot, rotate twice for surgeon's knot. Anyway, rule number one, needle holder goes above the incision line, rotate the silk with the needle holder inside. Rule number three, grip the at the tip of the short end and the short end crosses the river, the incision line. So your right hand goes this direction and your left hand goes the opposite direction. So as you can as you can see this is the first throw and look at my left pinky. It goes all the way to the knot. It's the just a great distance to slowly um, rotate the silk, pull down the silk and your left pinky goes very close to the knot to provide a very very tight uh, knot. Uh, by doing this, you can prevent the silk gets on top of the lip and this really causes a lot of pain to the patient. You can prevent that by providing the uh, entrance of the pinky inside the oral cavity and the patient uh, cannot really feel uh, any pain on the lip. Now, our first throw is over and we are doing the second uh, throw. Rule number one. Needle holder goes above the uh, incision line. The silk rotates with the needle holder inside the loop. See, I'm doing the inside rotation again. Rule number three, grip the tip of the short end and the short end crosses the river back. So this direction, I pull my right hand and my left hand naturally goes to the opposite direction. So this 
is the square knot. As you can see, it's very tightly uh, created, and you can just cut at the three or five millimeters away from the knot to prevent from slippage. This is the square knot.